racing to the Breeders' Cup. Presented by Buick. We're at Monmouth Park on the Jersey Shore, where this summertime retreat becomes the first stop on our way to the Breeders' Cup, set for October 28th at Belmont Park. Hi, everybody. I'm Dave Johnson, and welcome to the start of eight broadcasts as we chart the progress and set the favorites for racing's big day, the Breeders' Cup. Today, the focus is on three-year-olds. We'll have the grade two Jim Dandy from Saratoga. That's the upstate New York prep for the Travers three weeks ahead. And here it's the $500,000 grade one Haskell, a three-year-old handicap with a swing of weights from 112 up to 120 at a mile and an eighth on the main track, which is labeled fast. It's a beautiful, breezy Sunday afternoon afternoon but temperatures are in the high 80s let's take a look at our television schedule through breeders cup day next week we'll be at saratoga older stars in the whitney handicap into the west coast for the million dollar pacific classic end of the month back to saratoga for the saratoga cup in the beverly d and the next day then on sunday the 27th we'll look at the two-year-olds in the hopeful and we'll see top turf horses in the arlington million from chicago super saturday always a precursor to the breeders cup end of september the final big three-year-old race the super derby and the week before the breeders cup We'll bring you up to speed on all of the divisions in our Breeders' Cup special. Well, an early arrival from Saratoga this morning, Charles C. Caddy, who's been watching the three-year-olds get ready for the Jim Dandy up there and the Haskell down here. Well, now that the Triple Crown is over, the focus for all the three-year-olds is the Breeders' Cup as they prepare to meet their elders in the Breeders' Cup Classic. And three-year-olds have traditionally fared very well in the Breeders' Cup Classic. They've won five of the 11, including Concern, just last year. Well, today's race is one of the last times the top three-year-olds will race exclusively in their own age group. So let's take a look at the field and see who we have here. Scratch number one, Pat and Jack. Blue Tuzmani with Chris DiCarlo, big price at 15 to 1 in the morning line. Mighty McGee, 15 to 1 with Tony Black. John and Pat, 20 with Chucky Lopez. Wild Sin, the wire-to-wire -wire winner of the Bluegrass earlier this spring. Tommy Turner rides 10 to 1. Reality Road with Mike Luzzi, fresh from his victory aboard uh, Kiri's Clown yesterday in the Sword Dancer at Saratoga is 15 to 1. Citadel, solid stakes performer with Eddie Maple, starts at 6. Kingdom City with Perret at 15. The lone filly in the contest, Serena's song. Gary Stevens in from California to ride the morning line favorite at 5-2. to two. Pyramid Peak with Herb McCauley, second choice at 4. Jealous Crusader Rick Wilson looking for his third win of the afternoon. And Suave Prospect has drawn the outside post position. And Pat Day will ride. Oh, one more scratch. Bob Newmeyer, who is supposed to be with us on the broadcast today, under the weather up there in Boston. I'm sure you're going to feel better, Bob, with a few winners under your belt. Hey, Charles, what about the word Haskell? This week, every time you hear it, you also hear Serena's song. Well, anytime you're on a filly against the boys, it attracts everyone's attention. And add to it the fact that Serena's song is the single most accomplished starter in this field of either sex. She's the only grade one stakes winner. She's won five of them, plus she's won four grade two stakes, including this trouncing of the boys in the Jim Beam stakes. Oh, she ran away and hit at Turfway Park on April the 1st. It was a field of seven. She was the four to five favorite, and she destroyed them. That's Serena's song, Beating the Boys. She could do it again today. Well, she's obviously very comfortable here at Monmouth Park. She worked well. She's back at her ideal distance. In fact, she's a perfect three for three at a mile and an eighth. Mile and an eighth also happens to be the distance of the Breeders' Cup distance. Well, she will then be part of a very powerful Wayne Lucas contingent. He holds a strong hand just about everywhere except the turf races, and even and that can change with him. Well, that's the sports page, the front page of the sports page. Up front, though, the real front page all this week, the story has been the heat. And to find out, well, what effect it has on racing, let's ask the track announcer here at Monmouth, who will call the race for us today, Larry Colvin. Monmouth Park has always had the reputation of being a racetrack which favors horses on the front end. This is my second year here at Monmouth Park. Last year, I didn't notice it quite that much. However, this year, front runners have been doing extremely well especially over the last couple of weeks where it's been hot and humid front runners have been prevailing here yesterday as an example only one horse was able to come off the pace and win that horse was only three lengths behind at the most in the race so if you're looking for a horse on the front end of the Haskell you probably are on the right track and you're certainly at the right track 
And let's meet Larry's boss, the executive vice president, general manager of all racing at the New Jersey Sports Authority. That's Monmouth and the Meadowlands, Hal Handel. Hal, you got a barn full of horses over there waiting for the Breeders' Cup. Yeah, we got lots of horses back there gearing up for the fall campaign, culminating in the Breeders' Cup. As a matter of fact, Timber Country had a terrific work this morning, so one of the stars is getting ready to go again. It's a great place to be for the summer and also looking forward to the fall, and you're having a good meet, I understand. Yeah, it's a wonderful racetrack. It's a wonderful location at the Jersey Shore, and uh, we've just had a great summer. Attendance is running ahead of last year. Betting on track is ahead of last year. Betting off track is ahead of last year. We've had two purse increases already, and we're going to announce the third today. So it's just been a great summer. And what about upstate at the Meadowlands? Things going well there? Yeah, the other racetrack is doing fine, too. We've got the showpiece event next Saturday, the Hamiltonian. We're coming off a record Meadowlands pace, and it's been a, just a wonderful summer. We'll see you at the Breeders' Cup? At Belmont Park. Okay, very good. <laughs> Thanks very much, Al. Well, the Breeders' Cup is three months and two hours away. Breeders' Cup Day, October the 28th. Just three months from this weekend, and Belmont Park, two hours north. We're on our way. And welcome back to Monmouth Park and our live coverage of the Haskell as we race to the Breeders' Cup. Say, look at that great shot of the turn for home. And Sunday's has become a real family day with all the picnics going on underneath those great picnic tables out there at the top of the stretch. Well, let's take a quick look as we look forward to the Breeders' Cup Classic. Here's the future book odds from Caesars for that mile and a quarter race on the main track. Cigar, who's won nine straight, is the early favorite at two to one. Concern, who won last year's Classic, is at nine to two. Thunder Gulch, Derby and Belmont winner, and a three-year-old is at six. And three horses who we'll see in the Haskell at big prices. And, of course, that could change depending on what happens today down here in the Haskell. Well, up at Saratoga in upstate New York, the big race was the Jim Dandy run just a few minutes before 5 o'clock Eastern. And with that report, we'll go to Charles C. Kent. Well, it was just as beautiful a day at Saratoga for the Jim Dandy as it is here at the Jersey Shore. And the Jim Dandy is the last, is usually a traditional prep for the Traverse Stake, which is the next stop for three-year-olds racing to the Breeders' Cup. It was run at a mile and an eighth on a fast main track under allowance conditions. It is a grade two race and drew seven horses. Long shot Peruvian drew the rail with Jose Santos. Pat and Jack got a little attention there looking for his first stakes attempt, but there was a lot of interest in Composer who won his last start by 11 lengths with Jerry Bailey aboard. Malthus is fresh in from Panama. He's a long shot, a star standard. He was making his first appearance since finishing second in the Belmont stake. Lou Tasmani scratched in favor of coming here. And then we had Save the Whale at 20 to 1, and Hooley, who'd won four straight this year, including the Dwyer Stakes, he was 2 to 1. And now for the call of the race, Tom Durkin. And they're up. Star Standard sent immediately to the lead, and Hooley is mashing his speed on the outside. Save the Whale is right there as they race for the first turn. Julie Crone going to the whip on Star Standard to get to the lead. Hooley right there to press right from the beginning. And it's three lengths back to Patton Jack and Save the Whale. Composer is now running in fifth in the early going. Three lengths to Peruvian and another five back to Malthus, who's been outrun behind an opening quarter of 23 and one-fifth seconds. They're into the back stretch. Star Standard driving on the lead. There by length, Patton Jack is up close. And Hooley is settled down right there with the pacemaker. And Composer is moving sweetly in fourth position now. And he's taken to the outside of Hooley for a clear run. Then Peruvian's only four lengths from the front. Another five to save the whale. And five lengths back to the Panamanian Colt Malthus. They ran a half in a legitimate 47 seconds flat. They're moving for the half-mile pole. Patton Jack slipping through on the inside. Hooley is there. Star Standard showing that tendency of his to bear out. And he's gone wide, three wide into the far turn. Composer is a strong fourth and Peruvian. Three furlongs out. And it's Patton Jack in front. And Patton Jack the leader by a length and a half. Star Standard second. Hooley is laboring now in between horses. Peruvian coming up the inside. And there's Composer. Composer to the attack as they come to the top of the stretch. Composer, a threatening presence outside of Patton Jack. 
Pooley will not get it done today, and he is stopped abruptly. Star Standard won't do it either. Peruvian is third at the eighth pole. Now Jerry Bailey is asking Composer for run, and he is indeed getting it. Composer is pulling away impressively here, leaving Pat and Jack and the rest behind. Malthus advances to third. It will be Composer who wins with style. He won the Jim Dandy by four, and long shot Malthus got up for second. Pat and Jack was third. Very disappointing efforts today from Star Standard and Pooley, who were last and second to last, beaten over a dozen lengths this afternoon. And so it was the closers who dominated in the Jim Dandy today after a track that had been favoring speed all through the early part of the meet. Composer, who won and paid $6.50 for $63.40. Longshot Malthus, the Panamanian import, pays big numbers there. Pat and Jack held on after having the lead briefly, held on to be third, paid for $90. Now, Composer is the son of Easy Goer, who's owned by Henrik Defiakowski, you see there in the winter circle, who is now the owner of Calumet Farm. And Jerry Bailey, who's been on a tear up at Saratoga, wound up the winning rider. So I would say that now, after the failure of Hooley and Star Standard, certainly Composer bolts to the lead of the front of the class here, and the stage is at least semi-set for the Traverse Stakes in three weeks. Dave? And as we watch the stretch drive again, you just have to remember that no matter what kind of a horse Jerry Bailey's on, whether it's a favorite like this one or a long shot on the turf or on the dirt, sprint or a distance, he is so dangerous. Jerry Bailey again to the winner's circle, this time winning the Jim Dandy. Well, Amriel Haskell was the first president of Monmouth Park. Today's race named in his honor, and that's coming up from Monmouth. Stay with us. You know, no trainer has enjoyed more success on Breeders' Cup Championship Day than D. Wayne Lucas with a record of 12 wins. Two of those came last year. Timber Country and the Juvenile, and that memorable stretch drive in the Juvenile Phillies between Flanders and Serena Song. Both of those Phillies trained by Lucas. So it's no wonder that he's eagerly looking forward to this year's edition of the Breeders' Cup on October the 28th. Well, I think historically, you know, this is the time of year to get excited about it a little bit because it, it creeps up on you a lot quicker than you think. I mean, we're now turning into August, and then August and September, with it, and then October, it gets here fast. So we're trying to develop our two-year-old program at this point, pointing towards that goal, and, of course, uh, the Serena songs, Timber Country, Thunder Gulches, and so forth that will represent us have to be in that picture, too. Serena's song is pointed for the Breeders' Cup Distaff, a race Lucas has already won three times. But why has Lucas chosen the Haskell instead of potentially easier races against her own gender? Well, in looking at the whole big picture, the Haskell seemed to be the best fit. And again, I think a lot of times managing these horses is very important. What we're trying to do here is get her into a mile and an eighth, two-turn race. And... Uh, this one, half a million dollars, uh, well, you could argue Colts against Phillies, but if you're a purist and look at just objectively the speed numbers on her and handicapping figures, they uh, probably appeal to uh, the handicapper in this race, too. She should go favorite in this race, regardless of who enters, and whether she wins it or not remains to be seen, but it looked like a good fit to me, and, and uh, I think she'll do very well here. She has, of course, already beaten the boys at today's distance in the Jim Bean Stakes nearly four months ago. But she lost her last start against Phillies in the coaching club American Oaks, a loss that some say points to fatigue. Well, anytime they get beaten, they all get beat. Uh, you know, you, you try to go back, and, and uh, the people that are not knowledgeable have their theories. The people that are training them have other theories and so forth. I think that the that uh, she just didn't have a good day in the coaching club Oaks, and I think that she'll bounce back. I think people that think that maybe uh, this is a, a race that's coming up in, in the wrong part of the time and frame for her uh, should probably pick one of those others and bet on it. But if you do, you'll be betting against one of the hottest jockeys in the game, Gary Stevens, who rode Lucas's Breeders' Cup Classic hopeful Thunder Gulch to victory last weekend. Gary's on a roll. He's doing very well. He's in the zone, as we say in sports, and uh, he's excited about coming. We think it's a good fit here. We still got to go out and do it, and, uh, you know, they get beat and so forth, but I feel comfortable. 
And it looks like Serena Song is comfortable as she makes her way to the walking ring behind the big grandstand here at Monmouth Park to get ready for today's Haskell and her engagement against the boys. Well, D. Wayne Lucas is just half of the most successful twosome right now in thoroughbred racing. It just seems like every grade one race, at least since the Kentucky Derby, is either trained by Wayne Lucas or ridden by Gary Stevens. Gary Stevens with six grade one wins since the Kentucky Derby is with Charles C. right now. Well, Gary Stevens has ridden the winners of three Breeders' Cup races, and I'm sure he would like to make it at least four aboard Serena Song this year. But first, Gary, we got to come back off the loss in the coaching club, American Oaks, at a mile and a quarter. She finished second. You had the lead. What happened, and when did you know you were in trouble? Well, I had my first fears uh, entering the 3 8 pole. I felt that I had a lot of horse underneath me, and I tried to scoot away from Golden Bree and, and take her out of the race and wasn't able to. I punched on her, and she didn't really respond in her, her normal fashion that she does. Uh, actually, as, as we entered the stretch, uh, I felt Golden Bree come up on, on her hip. My filly was tiring pretty good. But uh, inside the eighth pole, she kind of gave me a, a second glimmer of hope. Uh, she's got so much heart and determination. You can see her really digging in right here, just uh, trying to give me everything that she's got left. And uh, right at this point, it's just, just a matter of uh, getting her across the finish line in second and taking care of her. But, uh, you know, it still wasn't a bad race. And uh, like I say, she's got a lot of heart and determination. We've come back to a mile and eight today and uh, Wayne's cranked her up a little bit for this race gone back to his uh, normal training resume with her and uh, I'd look for the, the same Serena song today that we've seen in the past and even though there's a lot of speed in this race she doesn't have to have the lead early on in fact in your three rides she hasn't had the lead in the early part no she hasn't she definitely doesn't have to have the lead but uh, the main thing about this filly you just don't want to get in her way if the pace is slow and she's comfortable on the lead that's where I'll be if the pace is fast and she's comfortable sitting off of it she can come from anywhere. She's been down inside. She's been bumped around, knocked around, and, and uh, fought some tough races. And she's usually come out on top when she's been in those battles. So I've got a lot of confidence in, in her capabilities and how she's a, able to adjust to certain situations. All right. She is tough. And Gary, good luck to you both this afternoon. Thanks, Charles. All right. We go back upstairs to Dave Johnson. And there is Serena Song getting ready to be saddled. And Gary Stevens with that new haircut will jump aboard. You know, there's another Serena Song here today and it's a hot air balloon it's the brainchild of gary waldman and it came to pass totally independently of the horse serena song it's named in honor of waldman's 12 year old daughter serena and it was made possible through generous donations of bob and beverly lewis and the waldmans and others it gives people with disabilities the chance to ride in a specially equipped hot air balloon what a great idea the serena song balloon prep here at uh, Monmouth Park for the race today, the Haskell, is the Long Branch Breeders' Cup. And the first three finishers from that race are coming back today. The winner was Pyramid Peak, ridden by Herb McCauley. In fact, Herb's ridden this horse in his last four starts and won two of them. And he told us about how that last race will set him up for today's Haskell. Well, it's, he's got a race of the racetrack, which I think is extremely important. And the other day, he left the gate full of run. He showed speed. He was up on the front end, going head and head with another horse. He shook that one off at the far turn. And then uh, Swap Prospect came up to him in the stretch, and it looked like he was going to go past me. But I had a ton of horse, and he just drew off with him the way he wanted to. Ton of horse, that's the key phrase, because the horse who finished second, Suave Prospect, didn't have much fractions to run at. There's Pyramid Peak, winner of the Long Branch Breeders' Cup at a mile and a sixteenth on this fast track. So you've got to win over the track. But I think the second horse in that race, Suave Prospect, will benefit the most from that race. He had a nice rest before it and uh, should improve. What do you think, Charlesy? Well, I'll tell you what I think. Suave Prospect never runs a bad race. He is one of the hardest trying horses in this field. And even though he has not won a race, since January, he's lost some really tough and close decisions, such as his nose photo loss to Thunder Gulch in the Florida Derby. And one person who admires this Colt's tenacity is his rider, Pat Day. He likes his heart a lot. Well, you know, I, I watched his races in Florida this winter against Thunder Gulch, and, and uh, I, think, I think what happened to him in, in those spots uh, was he hooked a horse that's a, that's a fighter, you know, and, and a bit more of a fighter maybe than he is. You know, he, he and he hung in there gamely. He just uh, dropped some narrow decisions to Thunder Gulch. So I would think that uh, his, his ideal race is to lay, uh, as I said, maybe third or fourth, uh, you know, behind a realistic pace. 
uh, be able to creep up into contention, uh, leaving the three eighths pole, and then make a big, a big run from there to the wire. And breaking from the outside half of the racetrack there will set Salt Swab Prospect up to be able to drop over in behind the front runners and make his late move. He's only run one really bad race aside from a traffic-ridden Kentucky Derby disaster, and that was in the Peter Pan, the only time he ran without Lasix this year. He's back on it today, so watch for a big one from Swab Prospect. Now, a year ago today, speaking of big ones, Holy Bull was the talk after his big race in the Haskell this time a year ago, and nobody but he paid much attention to a really tough little brown colt who finished third. His name was Concern, and his big day was yet to come. In the early stages of last year's Breeders' Cup Classic, Concern was in his familiar spot at the rear of the pack. But the classic distance of a mile and a quarter would give him plenty of time to make his late run effective. And Concern continues to gather momentum, and so the matter is also set down for the drive. Best Pal is coming with his rally. They're coming to the final furlong to Basco Cat. Dramatic gold, head to head. Concern continues to fly on the far outside. To Basco Cat, half day, trying to get him home. Concern will try to do it from last to first. And here's the wire. Concern from out of the clouds to win the 11th. For owner Robert Meyerhoff and trainer Dick Small, Concern represented their first Breeders' Cup success. And for jockey Jerry Bailey, his third Breeders' Cup Classic victory in the past four years. So last year it was Holy Bull and Concern, 11 of them, three-year-olds in the paddock now. Who will it be, Horse of the Year or possibly Breeders' Cup Classic champion? We've got a lot in store. A lot of activity in the paddock, and Charles C. is with one of the competitors. When Sid Adid arrived for the Kentucky Derby, he was a little-known, little-race, little-accomplished invader from England, and he actually exceeded expectations and ran well. He was then handed over to American trainer Rick Violet, and Rick, you've started him twice now, and you've, it really, he's improved a lot for you. He, he really has, but to be honest with you, uh, the owner's Ivan Allen, and he's a terrific horseman, has a great eye for a horse, and... Not really surprising to Ivan. He thought this horse had considerable talent, thought he'd run a little dirt over here, and he sent him over here with intent to be you know, a serious contender in the Triple Crown races, and that's the way it's worked out. Well, he certainly showed what he was made of in the Peter Pan and won that going a mile and eighth, which is our same distance as today, and certainly this should suit him. I think so. He might be best going a mile and eighth. Uh, he ran a little greenly in, in the Peter Pan and still got the job done, and I'm hoping he can, uh, you know, prevail again today. He came from just enough off the pace in the Peter Pan and did basically the same in the Belmont where he could sit behind what could be a fast pace today. He really did. I mean, it was a fast pace that day. He kind of uh, ran two races. He pressed the lead for a little bit, took a breather, and then came running again. I don't think he'll be able to do that against this field. I think he has to run kind of a, a steady race behind the pace and hopefully make one move and uh, be in front of the line. You'll be trying. Good luck to you, Rick. Thanks, Thanks a lot. And we'll go back up to Dave Johnson for the post parade. And the folks here are trying to pick a winner, but they're taking a quick check of the tote board. And let's do that, too. Pat and Jack was scratched. Blue to Zmani. That's a huge price. I mean, you don't expect him to be favored, but 35 to 1 is very big. And Mighty McGee is at 80. John and Pat at 25. And that's the price on the front running Wild Sin. Reality Road, 45 to 1. Sid Adid, trained by Rick Violet, who we just met with Charles C, is 3.5 to 1. Kingdom City is at 5 to 1. Serena Song, the 7 to 5 choice. Pyramid Peak up to a very generous 8 to 1. Jealous Crusader is at 50. And Suave Prospect at five to one. So let's meet the field for the 1995 Haskell. Of course, Pat and Jack stayed at Saratoga to run in the Jim Dandy. Here is Blue Tuzmani, raced in Italy as a two-year-old, was three wins and five starts there last year. Came here and promptly won the Withers, and then uh, ran uh, poorly at his last start, the Dwyer. But you can throw that race out because it was in the mud. Krista Carlo has won the Haskell before, and her six pounds off today. Mighty McGee working well, best if up front early, but that's a trouble because there's lots of speed in here. Big question mark is the distance. He seems to back up at a mile and an eighth. Next 
Next in line is John and Pat. Steps way up in class. How good is he? Well, he's three for three in 1995. He's versatile. He can go to the front, come from behind. Mile and 70 yards is the farthest he's been. He won his last out. We'll find out how good this one, trained by John Forbes, is in just a few minutes. And... Uh, Number five is Wild Sin. I'm still scratching my head about how he won the bluegrass wire-to-wire -wire with those slow fractions Randy Romero rode him back in April. He's reunited today with Tommy Turner, who won an allowance race on him at Gulfstream Park, and I expect he'll try and get to the front again. Wild Sin hasn't done much, though, since the bluegrass. Here's Reality Road, another early speedster, and uh, ridden by Mike Luzzi, a fine addition to the New York Rider Colony, is down here from Saratoga wearing the orange and black silks today. Pat Kelly trains Reality Road. Here's Citadine, a solid stakes performer in Europe and here. Two wins in England as a two-year-old last year. Yeah, a smashing off-the-pace performance in the Peter Pan after a dismal showing in the Kentucky Derby. Trouble last out in the Belmont. He still finished third. He's solid. And Eddie Maple's already had a winner here today. Here's Kingdom City looking for his fourth straight win. He wintered at the fairgrounds in New Orleans. Always a nice place to winter. Blossomed in Kentucky. How good is he? They still don't know. He's won his last three. He's looking for four straight. And that's Craig Perrette in the irons. And there's Serena Song, the horse to beat, the lone filly. She's frisky in the post parade, too. Speed, class, courage, and a jockey that just seems to win everything. That's Serena Song and Gary Stevens, trained by Wayne Lucas, of course. Number 10 is Pyramid Peak. He ran the race of his life last out. Gutsy, wire to wire, carrying 120 pounds. He carries the same weight and the same jockey as that victory last out. Herb McCauley in a very, very generous 8 to 1 right now. That's Pyramid Peak. Loves the track. Jealous Crusader tries two turns for only the second time. He was second in a mile and a 16th allowance race against older horses, but he only, only had five starts so far in his career. Three wins in two seconds. And Rick Wilson looks for his third winner of the day. And Suave Prospect, who earlier this year in Florida beat the nose and the neck by Thunder Gulch, who then went on to win the Kentucky Derby and the Belmont and the Swaps a week or so ago. Very bad post position way on the outside, but if anybody can overcome it, Pat Day can that's the field and we're just a few minutes away from the Haskell 1995 who do you like come on back and watch the race it's racing to the Breeders Cup today featuring live coverage of the Haskell from Monmouth Park mile and eighth race on a main track that is fast and let's take a quick look at the tote board to see what kind of prices we have on the 11 three-year-olds ready to race that nine for a long distance pat and jack scratch blue to Zmani. i still think that's a big price at 35 mighty mcgee 80 john and pat 25 wild sin 25 reality road 45 and look how the favorites drew toward the outside of the starting gate citadine at three and a half to one is the second choice with eddie maple kingdom city at five serena's song seven to five favorite pyramid peak is at seven to one jealous crusader up to 45 and suave prospect is at five to one well serena song is the horse to beat but seven to five is too low of a price we're looking for just a little bit of a long shot today's budweiser long shot Budweiser Longshot will take the new face on the East Coast, Kingdom City. He's named for a town in Missouri, and he's shown dramatic improvement lately, winning his last three starts. Most recently, in the Grade 3 Roundtable at Arlington, Kingdom City rated nicely behind the speed and exploded past the front runners before going on to win by four and a half lengths. Trainer Elliot Walden credits jockey Craig Perrette and Kingdom City's newfound ability to change leads properly for his rapid advancement. And we think his next move could be to the winner's circle of the Haskell as the Budweiser long shot. Well, that was Larry Colmas telling us about today's Budweiser long shot, Kingdom City. Now up to six to one as they come to the uh, starting gate. Charles C. Canty has joined me here out front. And this is a three-year-old handicap. Not too many of those. Well, no, not too many at all. And this is probably the only one we'll see the rest of this year. We have to point out, though, that Serena's song is actually the theoretical highway because she is 
actually carrying 123 pounds. She is in receipt of a five pound sex allowance from the boys, so that puts her in at 118. So Pyramid Peak and Swab Prospect are not truly the top weights. Jealous Crusader and John and Pat are down to 112 pounds. They're the lightweights. And uh, we're gonna take one quick break before we come back for the Haskell. Who do you like? Serena's song at seven to five or Citadel there? Seven uh, horses is three and a half to one. Two minutes to post for the Haskell as racing to the Breeders' Cup focuses on Monmouth Park this afternoon in a half million dollar grade one event. The Haskell for three-year-olds and our Bud Longshot is Kingdom City ridden by Craig Perrett and he has a few thoughts about his horse. Well, I think he's just a, a late developing colt. Uh, you know, still, we, we, we're kind of wondering how good he is. I mean, he's done everything in a good fashion, and we kept throwing different hurdles at him, which was a little tougher each race. And uh, I guess the round table bought him a ticket here. You know, it, it wasn't a real tough, tough feel, but uh, he's done things in, in such a good fashion after each race that uh, now we find out where we're really at with him. Uh, again, you know, when they start getting good and start doing everything you ask of him, uh, he deserves his chance here. Looks like he's got a pretty good shot at 6-1. to one. Charles, see what about the style of this race? Well, we've heard some different opinions about what exactly is going to happen. Mary Stevens says he doesn't have to have the lead on Serena's song, and Herb McCauley says he doesn't have to have the lead on Pyramid Peak. What looked like was going to be a pretty speedy race up front may wind up being a little bit more of a milder pace today. Who do you like? Well, I'm rooting for the filly because I think it's, she's the horse that, you know, she's the horse you got to beat. But I think there's some young horses coming on here, lightly raced horses like Reality Road and Pyramid Peak that are going to make a name for themselves. I think it'll be Suave Prospect with Pat Day winning it in the last second. And how about Pat Day? He, this is one of the few major races that he's never won. He's 0 for 3 going into the Haskell today. He might just get it way on the outside with Suave Prospect. Let's go to Larry Kalmus for the call of the race. Larry? Thank you, Dave. The last few horses are moving into the gate now for the Haskell, and the Philly Serena Song has just taken her position in line. A quick look at the tote board. She's 3-2 to two with jockey Gary Stevens aboard trying to become the first Philly ever to win the Haskell. Here's Pyramid Peak about to move into the gate. He took the long branch here at Monmouth Park and as well as the Flamingo Stakes. Flamingo winner Pyramid Peak has Herb McCauley aboard and they're getting him into the gate now. Jealous Crusader, a local runner here for Ben Perkins, going in. And Suave Prospect and Pat Day, his new jockey to the outside stall. We're all set to go here. They're all in line. They're off and running in the Haskell. And Serena's song bounced off with speed between horses. John and Pat is also alert from the gate, and Reality Road is out well between them. It's going to be John and Pat somewhat unexpectedly here to set the pace. Reality Road is racing in second, and Serena's song's going to be caught wide going into that clubhouse turn. Mighty McGee saves all the ground. Wild Sin is right there. Citadee racing three wide is only four lengths off the lead. They're tightly packed. Then it's Blue Tismani followed by Pyramid Peak. Swamp Prospect and Jealous Crusader are next. And Kingdom City, he's given them a head start here. He's 12 off the lead. The pace is fast. They went 22 and 3, and Gary Stevens makes his move with Serena's song now. He's on the outside of Reality Road, and these two are matching strides on the lead with Citadel three wide and third. Wild Sin is fourth between horses. John and Pat back to fifth down at the rail. Mighty McGee is sixth, five lengths off the lead. Then it's two back to Pyramid Peak. Swamp Prospect. Blue Tismani is ten lengths back, and he's dropping out of contention now. Kingdom City starting to roll from behind, but he's got a lot of work to do. Then it's Jealous Crusader. Forty-six flat for the half. And there she goes. Serena Song takes the lead. Opens up by two on the turn. And now she's three on top. And she will take some catching. Racing in second position is Citadel. And Pyramid Peak is making his run on the outside. But Serena Song is in command here. She went three quarters and one ten and two. And Gary Stevens is riding Serena Song to a winning effort in the Haskell. It's going to be the Philly over the board, but now Pyramid Peak is coming on. Serena Song, she's going to have just enough left, and Serena Song wins the Haskell. Pyramid Peak gave her a scare late, and 
they brought Pyramid Peak dangerously close with a sixteenth of a mile to go. But it was the Philly with the class and the speed beating the boys again. Unofficially in 148 and 4. Charles, see, let's take another look. Well, Serena Song, he did just what he said he would do, Gary Stevens. He set just off that pace, then she pulled him on up to the lead and wanted to make an issue of it. Was clear at the turn, was clear here at the head of the stretch, but look at Pyramid Peak flying through the stretch on the outside there under Herb McCauley. But Serena Song, she knows where the wire is, and she holds on just till then. What a feeling. Swishing her tail through the stretch to say goodbye to those boys. It was a powerful victory. What a scar. Serena's song, unofficial winner of the Haskell Invitational, beats the boys again. Serena's song, daughter of Rahi, bred in Kentucky and owned by Bob and Beverly Lewis. Serena's song, trained by Wayne Lucas and written by Gary Stevens, is the unofficial winner of the Haskell. Let's take a look at the replay of the Haskell. Serena's song in a winning move on the back stretch. Gary Stevens put this horse in gear, 46 the half, but the fraction for three quarters, 110 and two. No wonder she was getting tired. But she had enough left to withhold that uh, last, that last late rush of Pyramid Peak. A quarter of a mile to go there, and Gary Stevens urges her into the stretch. Doesn't really get into her until the eighth ball. Citadel on the inside in the red colors, fading. Pyramid Peak in the yellow coming on. Suave Prospect was just out of the picture. And now it is Serena Song desperately trying to hold on after that quick three quarters in one, ten, and two. But she does it. What a filly. This was a brilliant effort. Sensational effort this afternoon. And a ride reminiscent of winning colors when Gary Stevens rode winning colors to win the Kentucky Derby. Get out there and let me let him catch you through the stretch. Right, Gary? We'll be back with the excitement from the winner's circle and talk to the owner and the trainer and the jockey after this. At their stop today at Monmouth Park. And there's the official winner, Serena Song, and here are the prices. Serena Song pays $5, $3.60, and $3 as the favorite. Pyramid Peak, the fast closing second horse, pays $5.40, $3.60. Citadel held for the show, $3.40. The exact uh, 9 10 combination here worth $27.60. The Whitnauer time, 1 minute 48 and 4 fifth seconds. Charles C. with Bob and Beverly Lewis. I know Bob and Beverly Lewis are as thrilled as any two owners in the business, but I think everybody in this grandstand is just as thrilled as you are. The public just loves this filly. She's marvelous. Congratulations. Oh, Charles C., thank you so much, dear. That, we're just absolutely thrilled with it. She just keeps giving us one great thrill after the other. And, uh, you know, when you have a team working for you like uh, uh, D. Wayne Lucas and a, and a Gary Stevens on board, uh, what you really can't ask for anything more we're very blessed and we we really fully appreciate the the the, the ownership of this horse and how this filly and how great she really is well and you also have a lovely two-year-old colt from last weekend hennessy who won the hollywood futurity it looks like you're going into the breeders cup fully loaded well, well i think you're right charles we have some beautiful two-year-olds and we're looking forward to the breeders cup all right, and we are looking forward to seeing all this these horses. This has been a half-bad week, I'll tell you. No, it's been a great week for Bob and Beverly Lewis. Dave, back to you. Let's take a look at the full order of finish top to bottom before we chat with Wayne Lucas. First of all, it was Serena Song leading the pack home. Pyramid Peak second, Citadel, followed by Suave Prospect, Kingdom City. Jealous Crusader finished sixth. After that, Mighty McGee, John and Pat, Wild Sin, Reality Road, and Blue Tusmani was 11th and last. The Wittenauer splits of the Haskell at a mile and an eighth, and 22-3, and 46th. The big fraction there, 110 and two fifths, and the finish home in 148 and four fifths. What about that uh, 110 and two? We well, got a sprinter there. Well, you know, I felt if we could get a little over 10, we had a chance. Uh, <laughs> Gary uh, decided to make a little bit of a premature move at the 3 8 bowl, and whenever you do that, you know, you're going to open up a little bit, and then sometimes the last 16th, 
looks a little bit like you're losing your ground. But anytime you do that, unless you're riding Secretariat, you're always going to look a little late at the wire. She was sensational today, yeah. wasn't she? I think she was. She saddled well. She schooled well since she got here. And, and uh, here here I thought her action was beautiful. And, and uh, I felt very good about her right here. Now, this is where I was talking about. I thought Gary said, well, let's see if you can catch me if you can attitude here. And uh, right at the quarter pole there, she's running easy. It's going to take a 22 flat quarter to run by her here, and that isn't going to happen with those behind her. Sid Adita, second pyramid peak. Did he give you any kind of a scare? Well, the, again, she's getting a little late at the wire, but then when you open up like that, that'll happen. I thought the race was very formful uh, with her and then the next uh, three horses. It, it, it plotted about like that. Maybe a handicapper that are playing the triple. We're doing all right. Any chance she'll run someplace else before the distaff breeders come? I think there's possibly one more race. There's a, there's a gazelle in New York, and I'd like to get a track, uh, one more race over the track at Belmont, but no more than one. Thanks a million. Congratulations. Thank Winning you. trainer, Wayne Lucas. Back to you, Charles. All I can tell you is that the Breeders' Cup distaff will be some kind of horse race this year with Heavenly Prize running the way she's running. She is nominated to the Whitney Stakes next weekend. I don't know whether she'll start there or not, but eventually these two fillies will meet, and what a race that will be. We'll all look forward to that, and we'll go back now, right now, to Dave Johnson. Thanks, Charles. Well, our next telecast will be next Saturday afternoon. We're on for an hour live, 4.30 to 5.30 from Saratoga, and a featured event is the Whitney. Following next right here on ESPN, the Baseball Hall of Fame inductions. Serena Song, champ again. Racing to the Breeders' Cup, featuring the 1995 Haskell Invitational, has been brought to you by the Breeders' Cup, racing's $10 million championship.